Hello, I'm Barry Crost. I'm a family constellation facilitator and a trainer. And today I'm going to do a demonstration about what happens in an individual family constellation online. So the individual session is very similar to a group workshop that you may have seen before. In a group workshop, we have a client with an issue. Representatives are chosen to stand in for the family members, the ancestors, illnesses, places, events. Bert Hellinger would ask about the issue from the client and suggest representatives that would show how the client might be entangled with someone who is excluded or another systemic issue. Bert Hellinger would have the client carefully arrange the representatives who were chosen from the audience in an order that really felt correct and take, his, take their time to really do it. Then Bert Hellinger would use his knowledge of systemic dynamics, his intuition, and watch the representatives carefully, uh, particularly where they looked, their body language, their breathing, at some point, he would make a major intervention and suggest sentences that would create healing and resolution for the issue. He might also have the client stand in their place and also experience the disorder and perhaps the resolution. Let's switch cameras. Okay, so here we have a good example of a group. There's Bert Hellinger and a client. And let's say for demonstration purposes, this client sits down to Bert and tells Bert that uh, he's always feeling like he's leaving. There's always a feeling of leaving. In a relationship, he always is leaving. In his jobs, he's always leaving. Whatever he does, he always feels like he's leaving and he can't stay. He's always abandoning whatever project, whatever is in his life. So Bert Hellinger says, um, did anything happen in your life? It's, or did anything happen in your family system that could have something to do with this. What happened in your family system? And then maybe the client tells Bert, well, my mother's father left the home when she was a small child and really never really came back. He was gone. So Bert Hellinger might ask, well, what happened to the grandfather? And perhaps the client tells Bert Hellinger that the grandfather was in war, a soldier, came back from war, a changed person, didn't really talk about what happened. And then when the, the mother was small, he left. So perhaps Bert Hellinger asked the client to pick people from the audience to represent the mother, the, his father, himself, and the grandfather. So let's bring in client's father and the client's mother and a representative for the client and a representative for the grandfather. So then Bert would ask the client to arrange these representatives in the order that's made the most sense. So perhaps when he does this, the grandfather is looking this way. The father is over here, sort of away from it. The mother is sort of distance from everything here. And the client places his rep near the grandfather. So perhaps this is the initial uh, thing that we see. Let's bring the father in a little bit more for your viewing. So let's say this is the initial look. So Bert Hellinger sits back and he watches this, watches where everybody's looking, their breathing, their body language. He's looking over maybe to see what the client is experiencing, how their breathing's going. Perhaps he even turns into the room. How does the, how does the whole room feel? So perhaps at this point, uh, Bert Hellinger asks the client's rep, uh, how do you feel about your grandfather? And the rep might say, I want him to look at me. I want him to see me. And the Bert Hellinger might ask the grandfather, are you aware of your grandson behind you or any of the people that are here? And maybe the grandfather says, no, I, I don't, I'm not aware of anybody here. I'm somewhere else. I'm looking somewhere else. I'm, I'm gone. I'm not really here. So perhaps Bert Hellinger tunes in and he realizes that we need to bring in another representative and he brings in the ones who died in war. It's not uncommon when somebody is a soldier in war that they stay very 
deeply connected to not only their comrades, but the ones that, that they may have killed or they killed their friends. So perhaps in this constellation, the grandfather turns and looks at the people who died in war. And he has the grandfather say, suggest to the representative for the grandfather, please say to the ones who died in war, I follow you and I need to be with you. And his grandfather says that and he relaxes. And then maybe then the men who died in war look at him and there's a connection. And maybe the whole room feels something relaxes when the grandfather is connected once again with the ones who died in war. And it's clear that might be very relaxing. And then maybe the client's rep also looks at the men who died in war. Maybe even the mother turns and looks at the ones who died in war. And maybe Bert Hellinger says to the client, say to the grandfather and say to the ones who died in war, you all have a place with us. And we see you and you belong with us. And the client says that and the client relaxes. And maybe the grandfather and the men who died at war relax. And maybe the mother even relaxes more. We know that there's something called a community of fate when people have these kinds of things happen. They're connected. So in this case, it might be that the client's the client is entangled with his grandfather needing to leave. And if the grandfather doesn't have to leave, if the client has a grandfather who's in the system, he doesn't have to be uh, entangled with that. The grandfather belongs. He doesn't have to leave. He can have his the ones who died in war with him and still be in the family. There's no conflict here. The grandfather can take his place in the family system and his, the ones who died in war can be here too. And this is a solution. So now maybe Bert Hellinger takes the men at war and the grandfather and they're together. And then perhaps he takes the mother and father together and the client stands with his parents. And now Now here's an arrangement where everybody might really feel relaxed. The mother and the client's rep, her son, can see the grandfather and the men who died in war, and they have a place. And there's no reason for the client to continue to be entangled with his grandfather. His grandfather doesn't have to leave. He can stay. So maybe Bert Hellinger, just to really make sure this is clear, has the client rep or maybe at this point, the rep comes out and the client comes in. And Bert has the client say, dear grandfather, please stay with us, with your comrades. Please stay with us, with your comrades. And that might be the healing statement. The grandfather might really relax. And there's peace here. And there's reconciliation and there's no need for everybody to be entangled here. So this might be a very good solution. So uh, if we have a one-on-one -on -one session, it might look just the same. We don't have uh, audience members. The client in this situation is going to be much more involved in the process. So I'm going to typically ask uh, where the representatives for the client are looking. So where does the client's rep look? Where does the grandfather look? Right. So where do people look? This is something that's very easy to find out. Uh, I ask the client how their body is responding, how their body feels, the sensations that they have about what they're seeing here. Uh, our bodies can feel what our minds don't see. So I watch the client's breathing and the body language, even through the Zoom, I can feel and see it. I suggest questions or healing sentences that the client can say, as we did in the group setting. And we can use the questions to discover facts. 
Uh, if we say the facts that are correct, it feels relaxing. We can may have sentences that create resolution. So as the process unfolds, we often find uh, what's excluded and we can release it and the client from being entangled with it. Then we can look for a new arrangement of the family in the individual work, just like with the group, that gives the client a different relationship with the family and, and, and the entanglements can be released. So, uh, in, so in a constellation, we have objects. The client has whatever objects they want, stones, rocks, crystals, uh, and I'm using figures just like this. And we can move them around and we can find out what we feel. So what does it feel like when the grandfather has these men of, who died in war? Close and what happens? What does the client feel? So the client might have a session in their body, a sensation in their body in, in an individual session. That's really clear. Something feels different. So in a, a individual session, we use objects as representatives and it just is a little bit more collaborative than in the group. The client has to give me a lot more answers about how they're feeling and how they're breathing, but it works really well. So if you're interested in individual sessions, uh, you can book them online. I'll put a link here with the video that gives you access to my online booking. And if you have any questions about this, you feel free to ask. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Uh, I find this uh, process with the individual just as powerful as the work in a group. And I enjoy doing them just as much as I enjoy doing the group work. And and both group work and individual work are I work really fine online. The knowing field, the energy that we use does not have any limitations by space or time. So it works as well in in person as and on, and on Zoom as well. There's no real difference. Uh, they both work really well. So thank you very much.